Welcome to your supernatural life, Dr. LaPuma. Hello, Beth. How are you? Great. How are you? I'm great. Nice to hear from you. Yeah, it, really glad you can come today. And, um, you know, I had an aha moment about food, how it affects my body when I was a kid and I had a bad sore throat. I remember that when I had this pain in my throat that went away and I ate some cookies, uh, very sweet, sugary cookies, and as soon as I ate them, my sore throat came back along with a fever. And I thought, oh, there's a connection here. Sugar weakened me and made me feel sick again. And then as an adult, uh, I actually eliminated a tumor in my chest by changing what I ate. And I'm wondering, did you have an aha moment yourself around food and health? Um, well, none quite so dramatic as that. Those are very impressive stories. I, I, um, I don't know, Beth. I think I've just always loved to eat, and I have felt that there was a lot of power in food that was underestimated in the medical literature uh, because of what my patients were telling me. Um, I suppose if I had an aha moment, it was that I was on the cover of a magazine uh, called Chicago Medicine about 15 years ago, maybe a little more now, um, sitting with a patient talking about an ethical issue. I did the first fellowship in the country for physicians and medical ethics at the University of Chicago, and I um, was sitting with her uh, discussing an end-of-life care issue, and I noticed that in the picture I had three chins. Um, <laughs> it, it, oh, boy. seemed quite interested, but I, that was the only thing I could see. And so I decided to go to cooking school to learn how to make a healthy diet taste good, and to keep the weight off that I subsequently lost using rice crackers and grapefruit all the wrong way. Uh -huh. uh, and, in fact, when I went back to cooking school, uh, back to medical practice after going to cooking school, I found that the, my patients really wanted to know more about what to eat, what to eat for diabetes, what to eat for arthritis, what to eat for insomnia, depression, even constipation. And uh, I joined Mike Royzen with Real Age at that time, and we wrote The Real Age Diet and Cooking the Real Age Way, mm -hmm. and um, began Chef Clinic, a cooking camp for adults, and then out here in Santa Barbara have continued with the Santa Barbara Institute and have uh, created something called Chef MD, which helps people look and feel better with what they eat and prevent disease with restaurant-quality food. Right. Now, you call it culinary medicine. What, can you explain what that is? Yes, culinary medicine uh, blends the art of cooking with the science of medicine. It takes the best and most flavorful cooking techniques and combines them and integrates them with what we know about how those techniques and foods and, um, and preparations um, can change how your body looks at food and how your body uses food, not just as as fuel, but also as medicine, as information, and as pleasure. Uh huh. Can you tell us a little bit about the, your research team? Like, how many foods were reviewed, and, and were the tests done on people, or were they done on animals? For the Chef MD book, um, I assembled a wonderful research team that I'm very proud of um, that looked at 3,000 different clinical studies, largely clinical studies, um, studies in people, not in so much in animals or in the laboratory, to try to uh, determine which foods had effects on 40 different conditions, some of which I've already named, and, and which foods both to avoid for those conditions as well as which foods to choose for those conditions. Most of the medical literature currently reflects foods that injure people, um, mm -hmm. foods that, for example, are um, toxic in one way or another. You mentioned foods that are, uh, contain gluten, uh, especially important for people who are gluten sensitive or people who have celiac disease. But um, there's not very much, or at least I didn't think there was very much, about foods that actually improve disease, actually prevent diabetes or improve blood sugar control improve blood pressure control, actually reduce risk for and even prevent um, gout, cardiac illness, and so on. And so that was the focus of our investigation. We looked at these 3,000 studies and boiled them down so that you don't have to read them all 
uh, into uh, about 300 pages, including 50 recipes and uh, 40 off-the-shelf menus for 50 foods that, uh, excuse me, 50 new approaches to what do you eat for that for 40 different conditions. Uh huh. And um, yeah, I love your book. It's 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 easy to read. It's got these great tips. Um, I love your little little bites that you t- you talk about. Um, Thank you. Yeah, like just easy stuff that grabbing a handful of nuts or almonds or walnuts before eating a, a high fat meal, for example, you will cut the 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 um, inflammatory effect of the trans fats, for example. Can you um, recommend some foods that perhaps could help our immune systems? Um. I can. Immune conditions are uh, are all different. They're actually pretty complicated sorts of diseases. Um, the most well known of them are autoimmune disorders, where the immune system re- reacts to what are thought to be normal body tissues, and that's where some thyroid disease comes from. Thyroiditis. Uh, we've mentioned celiac disease, which is a gluten enteropathy that body reacts to to gluten as if it was a pathogen. Um, lupus is a well-known uh, immune disease, as is rheumatoid arthritis. And, and the foods that improve, that you know, give nutritional support for the immune system um, work not just against these conditions, but also against uh, your um, intercurrent infections like the flu. And what's missing from a lot of people's diet, which is interestingly not just a dietary component, is vitamin D, so essential in correcting errors that your genes make in in creating new proteins and in watching other genes. And that's all that genes do, by the way. They make protein and they watch other genes. And without enough vitamin D, your proofreader genes, the genes that catch errors that your genes make, um, don't work well, and especially as we approach flu season, uh, it's going to, the days will be a little shorter and, and people won't get quite as much sun. So I like people to get at least 1,000 units of vitamin D, preferably in a supplement, and if they're dark-skinned or African-American or Hispanic-American um, or um, simply uh, uh, too tan, they ought to have at least 2,000 units of vitamin D, Vitamin D3 is the active form of vitamin D. That's what you want to look for at the side of a caplet. Um, and uh, for those people who are vegan, and I know you have some listeners who are, vitamin D3 is, is not vegan, and so you'll look for vitamin D2, which the body will convert to the active form. What I do in practice, Beth, is often write recipes on prescription slips. So I would mm-hmm. like people to begin to think about food um, as pleasure and as culinary medicine. And you mentioned before some of those tips. If you sprinkle black pepper on your curry, you actually absorb more of the curcumin and the turmeric that's in the curry. Uh, Turmeric is what makes curry yellow. It makes some mustards yellow, and it's an anti-inflammatory that reduces Alzheimer's risk and stabilizes ulcerative colitis but you don't actually absorb the curcumin in a curry unless you do sprinkle a little black pepper on it because black pepper has a chemical in it called piperine that allows you to absorb the curcumin. If you, if you eat yogurt with friendly bugs like um, uh, probiotics, which are the good bacteria that we need inside of us to help us digest and to improve immunity, then you'll actually not just have a healthy intestine and immune system, but you'll cut the the percentage rate of diarrhea and upset stomach from a course of antibiotics. You want to separate your yogurt and your antibiotics by at least two, and many people think four hours, so that the antibiotics you're taking for an infection don't kill the good bacteria probiotics that you're you're um, putting you're helping your intestine out with. And you want to take that yogurt for a few days after take, finishing the antibiotics as well. All easy things you can do to improve your immunity and enjoy great flavor.